Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel for my subscribers and a big welcome to anyone that's new here. Today I'd like to talk about my latest obsession which is a flag book. So this is a flag book. It's a bit like a card, it opens up and you can actually even display it. So it's quite sculptural. It's designed by a lady called Hedy Kyle and it's based on a concertina fold and then you add in little flags. So this is what it looks like when it's flat. You can see the flags here. And then when you open it up, it opens up in this beautiful way and you can twist it and turn it. So um, I've absolutely loved making them. So this is the basic one, but I didn't want to just stop there. Oh no, I wanted to have a lot more fun. And so I have been experimenting and making lots of different ones. So here is a bird one. This one I made by, I, I just had a vision that I wanted birds. And so I went on to uh, Mid Journey, uh, which is an AI tool and asked it to make me some tropical birds. And this is what I ended up with after quite a bit of tweaking of the prompt. And then I painted the background in watercolor to match the bird prompt. So I really like this one. This one looks lovely on a shelf actually. So this is very sculptural. Then I took it a stage further. I decided I needed some fish in my life. And so I made an underwater scene. This one was particularly fun because the card I made myself, well, not the card, but I designed the card. So I used loads of different spray inks and sprayed some mixed media card with all these different spray inks and um, mica sprays and all sorts of things um, in both the orange and the green. So you've got the underwater scene and the, the fish. So when you open up this one, you can see all the lovely fishies swimming around and I've added some seaweed on the sides so this one was great fun to make but it took ages because I had to painstakingly cut out all these fish and draw the draw the fish designs on all the fish uh, but it was great fun I really enjoyed that one this one I nearly ran out of flags that matched it um, so I thought you know what you don't actually have to fill every slot you can, uh, I started off this side and then I just gradually petered out this side. So that's just another little approach. And this one would be perfect to stick inside a journal. Um, and in fact, after the project I'm going to show you today, I'm probably going to focus on doing some that actually work as uh, journal pieces inside your books, whereas the other ones are very much standalone. And then today we're going to go very seasonal and I am going to make a pumpkin patch. So we're going to have pumpkins and we're going to have bats. So stay tuned, uh, follow along with me and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Here's the card I'm going to use for the background and for some of the flags. So this is just some uh, mixed media paper. I'll pop the weight uh, and the uh, details on the screen. So I've used a mixture of Prussian blue, Van Dyke brown, um, and then some different yellows and oranges just to start to allow that ombre effect to come down and then on top where you to get this lovely sheen I've used Tim Holtz Distress Spray Distress Mica Spray in Iron Gate and that's given it a lovely nighttime feel and then I've replicated that on the back as well so I'm going to cut this to the size I want for my card and then I'll show you how to do the folds. I've cut it to size and it measures 20 centimetres high by 40 centimetres across. And we can pick which side we want as our front and our back. Um, I'm going to have this as the inside part. These edges here are going to, so these edges here will form a border which I'm going to add something onto. So there's a little bit of scrappiness on that edge there, but that's not going to matter. There's a little bit of scrappiness there, but again, this is going to be covered up anyway. So one of the most important tools you're going to need for this project is a bone folder or something that works in a similar fashion, maybe a, a knife or a spoon or just something that you can use to give a nice crisp fold. So the first thing we do is we fold it in half. Nice 
nice and crisp. Not worry too much about whether you've got valley folds or anything at the moment because we're going to move it all around anyway. Okay, then we fold into here. So I fold into the center. Make sure you accurate as you can. Okay. And then you do the same the other side. Okay, so now you've got four. Then we're going to fold this end in. Now this is when it starts to get interesting. Okay, <laughs> this is the fun bit. This is quite heavyweight cardstock. You might want to have a good practice with something a little thinner the first time you do this. Um, so now we've got this bit here and we're going to fold, create another fold another in here. So what I'm going to do is I want this, this point here to now touch that point. You're just going to very gently manipulate until you can get that fold in there. Okay, and then you're going to press it down. You're going to get lift up, get that bone fold in there. Okay, so now we've got another fold here. I'm going to take this one up to here. So that's going to make it another section which we're then going to fold in again. Okay, so we're going to fold that up to there. The bigger ones are easier to do. Okay. As I said, you might find it easier to practice on a normal sheet of paper, first of all, just to get used to the, to the folding. So now, again, we're going to take this fold here and we're going to bring it up to there. leaving this as my end piece okay so I can stick something on there so I'm not going to fold this one in you could do of course if you wanted to but I'm not going to do that okay and then this piece is now going to fold into there so I'm going to fold that to there so we've now made it to the middle There you've got all our folds there, see? That's concertina fold effect. And all you're going to do now is repeat the process on the other side. Let's give that another. So we're going to fold this one in here. And we're going to do this again because it is, it does take a little bit of getting used to. Once you've got the hang of it, right, so this is going to be our edge piece. So I'm just going to change the direction of that fold there, okay? So it's just going to change the direction so that it then folds up and I can get it to link up with that line there. And again, pressing down nice and firmly. So now we're going to take this one up to here. This one up to here. I think that needs a little sharper line on it. you've got those lovely sharp creases and then this is the final one which is going to go to here there you can 
see already it's going to stand up on its own so we're just concerting that up got lovely ombre effect already quite like that okay. and you might want to go in and just make sure it's nice and sharp So that's your that's your base now we're going to make the flags so the flags are the like the equivalent of the fish the birds and they are going to to go in i'm going to put use five so we'll have one here two three and then there'll be four five so it's one two three four five okay so this is where you can calculate how many you need so you're going to need five per fold. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 30 flags. But as this is going to be my, let's take it up to another level, instead of having identical flags, which I did on the fish, I thought that what I might do is make some pumpkins and some bats, uh, just to make it a little bit different. So I think I will have if we, if we were to look at this as an example, so we've got five items here. So I think I could go for pumpkin, 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 bat, bat. And I have this uh, paper left over from making the fish, which I made using spray inks um, and distress stains and all sorts of lovely yummy stuff but I think that would make quite a nice pumpkin pattern so the the next thing I need to do is design the pumpkins so what's important which I didn't which is a, a lesson I learned from doing this fish one is that you need this to stand up and what I can you see I've had to stick an extra piece of card on here because I had my fins overlapping the bottom which was very silly so they wouldn't stand up because the fins were overlapping so that's why I've added that extra piece of cardboard there so we need to think about the size of our pumpkins so I'm going to make some prototypes on just normal paper and figure out the best size for, for all of these items and then we can come back and have a look but the most important thing is that you can fit five in so that they don't overlap each other because that's that's the design of the flag book it needs to finish like that otherwise i think i don't think it'll work if it doesn't if it gets all tangled up in itself so we'll see how that pans out i started making my pumpkins and i thought i'll just pause briefly and show you what i'm doing so we had this sheet that I'd made before using various inks and I have uh, drawn a template of a pumpkin cut some pumpkins out I've done two sizes at the moment because I'm thinking actually for a bit of perspective we can have them shrinking in the distance so I'll do my third one slightly smaller on here and then so I've cut them out and you could just go for something simple like that if you wanted to but I prefer it to look a little bit more realistic so I've grabbed my um, coloured pencils and I'm literally just drawing pumpkins uh, over the top um, you need it to be double sided ideally so um, this could take a while <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, video myself drawing a few um, I like to use these Prismacolor pencils they are a little bit waxier and um, they're a good quality pigment and um, some of them are, are waxier than others and they blend really well this one is a chartreuse and that's this one is particularly waxy and if you if you draw over the top of some of the other ones it blends in really nicely and you can also get um, an invisible one which is a, a blending pencil which is this one uh, it's a colourless, it's just a hard piece of rubber I suppose it is and you can 
blend the colours. So each of these puppings is going to look unique. They will all be double sided and I am going to draw a few so you get the idea of what I'm doing. You can of course do anything you like for your own flag book. is I've drawn the outlines and now I'm going to come in with a bit of shading in some uh, different colours just to bring it to life a bit more, give it a bit more definition, shape. Just being quite subtle with my shading here, just giving it a bit of form. What I like about this approach, rather than creating something and printing it out, is that it becomes really a, a unique piece of piece of art as well as well as a book. The one I did with the birds was lovely, but it was with printouts, whereas this is completely unique. Just bringing in a few green highlights here. Oh, you can do the back one of that one. I'll come back to that later. Okay, now some of these are lighter. I love the, the fact that they've all got their own unique pattern. So you just select something that will just be a little bit darker than what you've got there just to help bring out the shading. Over the years I've collected a lot of these uh, Prismacolors. The only downside with them is that they break really easily so you quite often find yourself sharpening constantly and having having it snap off which is really annoying. I do love them. I haven't done much work with colour pencil for ages actually. I've got so many art supplies. Um, this feels like it just needs a little bit more around the stalk. I mean, you could go completely mad here and just spend hours. <laughs> it's up to you how long you want to spend on this. When I did the fish, I did start off printing them directly onto the card and cutting them using my Cricut machine. However, it didn't cut brilliantly. And uh, it didn't print brilliantly, so I thought, do you know what, I'm just going to draw them. They're not exactly hard to draw, are they? So, yeah, I drew them. Okay, so you're getting the gist, right, of what I'm doing. This might not be your cup of tea. You might think, there's no way I'm going to be doing drawing and shading. I just want to print something and cut it out. Okay, right, I am going to go away now and make a lot of pumpkins and then um, we'll come back for the next part of the project. I have painstakingly <laughs> drawn and uh, now uh, and cut out all of these double-sided pumpkins. And I have done the same with these bats. 
got two types of bats. So uh, what I did was create in a similar way to how I did the um, the pumpkins. I used various spray inks on some thin thin card. Uh, it's just um, mixed media paper. So I did different spray inks. The best effect is coming from the mica sprays, and I've used decay and uh, iron gate. So I've got a lovely mottled double sided paper. And then I created some templates of some bats that I found online, cut them out, and then I've cut out the bats. And then what I've done is I've grunged up the edges of the bats using Distress Ink. So I've not drawn on these, I've just, um, just grunged them up and kept them as a silhouette really, because you don't tend to see much detail in, in a bat, do you? As it's flying around. So now what I'm going to do is get ready to glue all of this on very very carefully move this so when you're gluing your flag book you want one row going on one side on one particular fold so i'm guessing well that's your valley um and that's on the right hand side of the valley so the recto side and then the next row is on the verso side now, when you do um, the traditional flag book using um, identical size pieces of paper, it's easier to measure it. So, uh, so if it was say 20 centimeters high and you've got five flags, you divide it and you get like four centimeters. So you'd have a four centimeter one here, four, 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 four. Now, because this is not your traditional flag book, uh, I am kind of guesstimating it a little bit. But um, what I also wanted to do was give a slight sense of perspective. So I've got um, the larger pumpkins on the bottom row, um, medium and then slightly smaller. Um, and then I've got two, I stuck with two types of bat in the end. So I'm going to pop these ones on this side. Um, I'm not going to glue them right down there. I'm going to glue the bats right on the edge. So we'll see how that pans out. Okay. So I know what I'm doing with the pumpkins. I want to get them glued on as quickly as possible and then we can focus on the bats. And I've also got this a floristry wire, which you will see I'm going to do something a little bit quirky with one or two of the bats. So you just want to glue a little bit down the edge of your pumpkin or whatever your flag and pop it on. And we'll just and make sure when you're doing this that you think oh which you know what do i really want that bit glued on i think actually i will because it does look a little bit like a, an odd blob and decide which side you want which is your preferred side i like them both on this one actually When you're doing a project like this, it's always a good idea to make extra in case anything goes wrong in your sticking process. Look at that side. And for our second row, we're going to do it on the opposite side. So again, you might want to pick which one you want to be most visible. Have a bit of variety if you've got... Right, what you want to make sure is that they have their own line. There we go. Now they should all fold up nicely. We don't want any overlapping, so just make sure that nothing's going to get caught. There we go. Right, let that dry. I've got all my bats ready, and I'm just debating whether or not I want to put the matching bats in one row 
and then matching backs in the other row or maybe mix them up a bit. I don't think it really matters so I think I might mix them up a bit. Okay but I do need to keep a couple of these shape bats out for the surprise element which you will see shortly. So let's stick a few on. This is going to be a live experiment on uh, international YouTube. What I want to do, make a double bat and put some wire in the middle of the bat. And then I'm going to feed the wire through this gap. I'm going to make a hole here and feed the wire through, which will then mean you can pull the bat in and out. Okay, so this is just a slightly crazy idea I have and so let's figure out how to do this I think if I kind of bend the wire so it goes the full length of the bat and then I'm going to glue the two together okay decent amount of glue pop on this shaped floristry wire which is being a little bit wiggly and annoying okay like so get our second bat decide which side we want these aren't exactly the same but they're near enough and i can always trim it a bit once the glue's dried so that they match better so i'm going to glue that down and i'm going to let that completely dry with a paper clip i've got my two bats and I've had a little bit of a play around to try and figure out the best way to make these work. Originally, I thought I might um, poke it through and then have some identical bats on the other side. But to be honest, thinking about it, you're, you're not really going to see them. So just to make things simpler and also to cope with the fact that there's a weight issue on here, cause, because this obviously is way heavier with a bat on it than that end, I am just going to thread them both through um, and then make a bit of a knot at the back loosely like that just so that you've got the option of having a little bit of a play around with them so a little bit if you have too much of a, of a length, so if I show you on this one, so it's really hard to do this on video, <laughs> but if you had it too long, it just gets in the way. So it's more just uh, a little bit of a quirkiness, just on a couple of them, so they've got a bit of movement, really. This wire is super bendy if you're using forestry wire, and you can fix it into place. So I've just got a little bit of fun, a little bit of quirkiness. Can't say I'm overly impressed with this idea, but you have to try these things, don't you? You have to try. And I might do it slightly differently another time. There. So we have our movable bats. 
now I'll just add the finishing touches. I've got two more pumpkins and I'm just going to stick them on the end there. And then I've got some more of these bats. I might just pop those on one end, maybe. Or maybe two there and one there, yeah? And then I've got this stuff, which I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of a silk that uh, off cuts or rough or recycled. I'm not really sure what it is. I got it from a place called Rainbow Silks, which is an online retailer in the UK. Um, but as you can see, when you start to pull it, it comes apart. And I thought, actually, that quite looks like, once you scrunch it up a bit, it looks like the could be could be bits of vine couldn't it for the pumpkin patch so just a little bit of a touch touch of this here and there along the bottom just to give it a bit of grounding i think if nothing else so i'll just pull off a few bits of this i've also got some loose bits of cotton which again can make up parts of the vine so let's just pull this apart there's a mixture of color in this kind of rough I don't, I don't know what it is <laughs> anyway i like it whatever it is it's really useful for crafting and uh so i'm just going to pull bits off and then i'm going to stick it on at the bottom just to give it a little bit of a finishing touch and a, as i say a grounding mm I did make one pumpkin leaf. Dab a few bits of glue here and there in this bottom row and stick all these little bits of vine cotton. to be flat so I'm literally just going to let it float down onto the glue and stick wherever it feels like it and the other bits will be loose yeah this is the point now where it all sticks to your fingers <laughs> See what that looks like when it's dried and then we can do the big reveal and we're all done there we go <laughs> here's our finished flag book closed and open I'm very pleased with it. I'm going to put it probably on a shelf as a Halloween decoration. <laughs>